Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Azadeh Shirazi, a board-certified dermatologist specializing in medical, cosmetic, and surgical dermatology. I'm also the founder of AussieMD Skincare. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna answer your sunscreen questions. I get so many every day about what is SPF? What's the best sunscreen? What do you look for? What do you avoid? So I wanna go into detail about sun protection in general because it's almost summer and a lot of you are gonna be spending more and more time outdoors. The UV index is going up and our sun exposure, our UV exposure today is so much greater than UV exposure you know, 40, 50 years ago. And skin cancer continues to be the number one cancer in the United States. Some famous faces, Khloe Kardashian was just diagnosed with melanoma on her cheek. So we are seeing this more and more. I treat a lot of skin cancer in my office and a lot of sun damage. And I see how much it really can ruin your skin. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and share this with a friend because sharing is caring and this is important information that you may really help someone avoid potential risks of cancer down the line. Start with SPF. What does SPF mean? Well, it stands for sun protective factor. It's really a measure of how well that product is going to protect your skin from getting a sunburn from UVB rays. Those are the rays that cause burns. Now UVA rays are the ones that cause photo aging of the skin. So they're the ones that break down your collagen, your elastin. They're longer and they can penetrate deeper. So when you're looking at the SPF factor, it's only gonna tell you about how good it's protecting you against burn it. For example, an SPF 30 means that it will take 30 times longer to get a sunburn with applying the product than not using the sunscreen at all. So is there a difference between SPF 15, SPF 30, SPF 50, SPF 100? or is it all just a marketing scheme? Well, the number can be categorized into low protection, which is SPF 15 or less, medium protection, which is SPF 15 to SPF 29, and then high protection is really considered SPF 30 to SPF 50. Now, anything greater than SPF 50 becomes very high protection. So even though there's not a lot of difference between SPF 100 and SPF 50, if you're one of those people that barely puts the sunscreen on, I mean, you see people that just, you know, like Gwyneth Paltrow does in this video where she just kind of barely coats the skin, then you may want to go with a higher SPF number because technically you don't have to use as much of the product. But in general, you really just stick to an SPF 30 that is broad spectrum. See, this is the part where it gets a little tricky because the SPF only speaks to the UVB rays. You want to use a broad spectrum sun protection because that blocks off UVA and UVB. There's really no sunscreen that blocks off all the UV rays, so you're still going to get some sun. That's what people say, you know, I don't burn with sunscreen, but I still tan. And if you're darker skin, you're still going to be able to produce melanin because again, that sunscreen is not gonna you know, block all the UVA rays. Those are the photo damage damaging rays, but it's really speaking to the sunburn rays. UVB causes burning of the skin, whereas UVA causes wrinkles and lines and sagging and makes your pores bigger, gives you brown spots and kind of weathers your skin over time. So I always say, the best protection is really covering your skin. That's why if you look at the inside of the arm on people, that's where they have the best skin. They don't have brown spots, they don't have wrinkles. Really, that is protected skin because it's completely shielded. In general, the upper parts of our body, so the top of our scalp, top of our ears, our lips, these are areas that get unshielded direct sun exposure. There are also areas that people tend to forget about, putting sunscreen and you know really wearing hats. That can significantly reduce your sun exposure. So let's move on to talk about the difference between chemical sunscreen 
and physical sunscreen. Physical sunscreen form a barrier. So they essentially block the UV rays from reaching your skin. And these are generally formulated with zinc and titanium dioxide. Now physical sunscreens, they have to actually be absorbed into the skin and then they take the UV energy and convert it into heat therefore preventing it from affecting the skin. And these ingredients are things like avobenzone, oxybenzone, octanoxate. They tend to be lighter in formulation. They tend to have a little bit more elegant feel and they tend to really blend in. They don't leave that white cast that you see with a lot of the physical sunscreens. Now, if you have sensitive skin, they're also more likely to cause a reaction. Whereas physical sunscreens, they tend to be better for sensitive skin types because because they sort of just coat the surface of the skin. And the nice thing about physical sunscreens, they tend to work almost immediately, whereas chemical sunscreens, they require a little bit more time to get absorbed into the skin to go on and be able to divert that UV energy. So what is the best sunscreen to use? Well, I always say the best sunscreen is the one you put on. So whatever feels good to you. For example, me, I love Hydrotint BB SPF 44. It is a physical blocker with zinc and titanium and it is tinted. I don't wear foundation. I don't have foundation on today. I stopped wearing it a few years ago when I developed this product because really it gives me coverage it gives my skin, I always say, it gives my skin like this filter-like appearance. It makes it very dewy. It's not oil-based like foundation is. It's water-based, so with hyaluronic acid and glycerin. And I find it to be relatively lightweight despite it being a mineral sunscreen. I also have sensitive skin. I'm also prone to discoloration. So a physical SPF moisturizer that is tinted because tinted SPF protects better against hyperpigmentation and discoloration. So that is the right sunscreen for me. Now, if you do wear a lot of makeup and you know you want to use more of a uh, chemical sunscreen that's better for piling skincare layers on or makeup on after, then you might wanna go with a chemical sunscreen. Now, Supergoop has some really great ones that can also function as a sunscreen primer. One of them is the unseen sunscreen which i love it literally just disappears you can't see it it is formulated with a lot of silicone which is what gives it that nice texture but if you're acne prone or have sensitive skin that might not necessarily be the right sunscreen for you so i always suggest if you have sensitive skin go for the zinc go for the titanium whereas if you know you don't have sensitive skin then you go for some of the chemical ones those are going to be at a little higher risk risk for causing reactions, but they do tend to be a little bit more lightweight. There's also body sprays. I don't really favor sprays for the face just because you can inhale them. I prefer more of a powder to cut down on shine and oil and give you a little bit of coverage, but a lot of people do love the sprays. And if you are going to use the sprays, I find that you have to put more of the sprays on than you would normal like lotions or cream. So go for a higher number, go for like an SPF 50 or higher so that you make sure you get adequate protection. But I do love them for the back, hard to reach areas. My current favorite is this UV Defense because it is reef safe, it is chemical free, it is mineral. And I honestly feel like once it gets on your skin, it's like it's stuck on there and it protects you for you know a long time whether you're in the water it, it is water resistant it also has things like aloe and antioxidants so a lot of sunscreens now come with the benefit of skincare such as being formulated with vitamin e like the uv defense and look for ones that are reef safe because if you are going to places like hawaii or you know some of these areas where conservation and you know our oceans are a huge factor they really want you to use reef safe sunscreen so that is a term to look for in a lot of the body ones but i always say the best protection especially if you're going to be out on the water all day wear a sun shirt look for upf clothing that is upf 30 or 50 
and you know UPF hats because that way you know you don't miss a spot because sometimes you know I'll miss a spot and then get burned there that's really your best bet particularly if you're going to be snorkeling or it's going to be harder to reapply sunscreen now some people really love the sticks I know that my kids really like them because they're such easy ways to reapply sunscreen whatever form works well for you SPF in the US is regulated by the FDA and in general sunscreens are safe just don't eat the tube I hear people on social media talk about how sunscreen is harmful and causes cancers and da 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 you know honestly they're safe as long as you're not bathing in it five times a day or eating the tube if you use it the way it's indicated for use, they are safe. Now, how often should you reapply sunscreen? In general, it tends to wear off after two to three hours. So if you're out there at the beach all day, make sure you take breaks. You can set you know, your watch timer or your phone timer to remind you to reapply that sunscreen because it is important. That's how people burn is they forget to reapply. A lot of people ask me, well, what sunscreen can I use that doesn't get in my eye? I find the sticks to be really helpful for that. Uh, also, like Neutrogena has one called Hydro Boost. That's an SPF 30. Uh, that tends to stick on pretty well. The Physical sunscreens tend to be a little bit better. The higher the number, sometimes those can get in the eyes. La Roche-Posay has some really great ones that are drugstore brand. They have ones with Mexarel or Siloxy Shield that tend to be really great at broad protection. What are the areas that people tend to forget to apply the sunscreen? We talked about how the upper body get that, gets that unshielded sun exposure. So your scalp, your part in your scalp, you know, that area is prone to sunburns. If you don't use it, you can use the powder. Like I love using this UV clear SPF powder. That's SPF 50. You can put that in there. Also dubs to act as a dry shampoo. It soaks up oil and sweat and kind of gives your, your hair some body and texture. So I really do love that one. Also, don't forget the tops of your ears, the back of the neck, and your lips so many people don't realize that especially women if you wear like a shiny gloss or if you use like aquaphor or a lip balm that doesn't have spf that shine magnifies the uv rays concentrates it on the thin lip skin what does that do it can cause a sunburn it can lead to skin cancer over time as you accumulate more and more uv damage it can also degrade your natural collagen. Our lips do get smaller as we age, and so you don't wanna lose that plumpness and you don't wanna get all those lip lines in that area. So don't forget your lips. Also, the back of the hands, top of the foot, those are other areas that are prone to getting missed. You know, low back area is another one. So make sure you cover all your bases and you really do think about your eyes, your lips, your ears. Those are delicate, thinner skin areas that are more sensitive than neck and chest. Especially with women, we're really good about our faces. We tend to skip that area. And that area is harder to correct in terms of sun damage treatment, like with lasers and so forth. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget, SPF is your BFF. Uh, if you find this valuable, I greatly appreciate your support. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and share this with a friend who might find this channel valuable. Until next time, bye, guys.